Hello, this is Moots at Trask. We are going to be doing a video on the late model soft tail swing arm installation. I'm going to go ahead and remove both saddle bags off this soft tail, set them down in a safe place. So after we have the bags off, uh, we'll get this bike up in the air and uh, remove the rear axle. There's a retaining E-ring. You want to set your jack so there's like zero pressure on the wheel. Once that is removed, you can easily get the wheel out of the rear of the bike by jacking up the bike a little bit more. There's a lot of other exhaust systems out there and depending on what support they have for the saddlebags, uh, worst case scenario, you may have to move the plastic receiver from the inside of the bracket to the outside of the bracket. On ours, that's what I do is I space the left one out, which you'll see later in the video, and I move the, the right one on the outside of the bracket as opposed to the inside. We're gonna bleed the brake system on the rear caliper. We're gonna bleed that system dry so there's no fluid remaining in the line. Or the caliper, just don't wanna have that stuff dripping all over your bend. Pull all that fluid out of there, loosen the banjo bolt, get that out of the way. The copper washers, they should be replaced. Move the caliper, get that out of the way. Take the seat off to gain access to the brake line ABS underneath the seat on the right side of the bike. Jack the bike up to remove the rear wheel. Get that out of the way. Uh, here is a, a pinch spacer that Harley has on their swing arm to uh, have access to install and remove the swing arm from the, with the belt. The belt slides through there. There's our upper shock bolt pivot. Pull that out. Remove the left side saddlebag support. And break lo loose the nut for the main pivot on the swing arm. Now this bike had an engine guard, body guard, all these brackets on it. I'm just gonna get those out of the way for now. Again, depending on what exhaust you have on your bike and what uh, saddlebag support, you can make that work. There's a nut for the main pivot. On the right side of the bike, underneath is a pinch bolt that retains the uh, main pivot bolt. So you gotta loosen that before you can slide it out. I pulled the swing arm off and I found out that I had to remove the belt guard, at least one of the bolts. That can be done while it's on the bike as opposed to doing it on the lift while you're taking it apart. We weighed this thing. This thing weighed in at about 28 pounds. Our new billet swing arm came in exactly at 20 pounds. There's a side cover. There's the uh, upper banjo bolt for the brake line. Here we are gonna actually assemble the swing arm. This thing is completely modular. The fasteners are there only to hold this thing together. Use red Loctite. 5 16th bolts are 24 foot pounds. And I use an electric gun just to run the bolts down by go over each and every one of them and torque them to a specific spec after I run them down. So we're assembling the right side, the upper arm, and here's the actual axle support. Five, five sixteenths, 24 fasteners, 24 foot-pounds red Loctite, and I run them in, get them started by hand. I'm gonna run them down with my light torque uh, drill gun and go over them and, and torque them all individually. So that secures the axle support. Again, it's all modular. The bracket fits into the arm and is locked in place by the billet itself. The, the fasteners merely hold it together. And we're doing the reverse step on the left side, the upright bracket, the axle support. And you have a left and right assembly. Run those down. Torque them in place. So on both sides, right and left, uh, the kit comes supplied with new pivot bearings. I'm gonna press those in place. There is a pocket. You press them down till the clip bottoms out in the bearing pocket. Right and left. Get those pressed down. We're going to finish assembling the right side. This is a uh, the arm that comes off the pivot and ties it into the upper shock pivot. This we can assemble and torque down. There's two bolts from the inside. Run them down and torque them. In the video, we have a pivot bolt that is supplied for use with the stock OEM shock. This particular bike had an Olin shock on there, but we do supply spacers that utilize the stock pivot bolt and uh, will adapt up to the, uh, the Olin shock. You know, Loctite these. This is the brake arm uh, slide retainer. Run those down and then torque them. It's a 
quarter 20 bolt, 110 inch pounds. So I'm gonna slide the main pivot through the right side of the swing arm. I'll slide the shock pivot bolt through the right side of the swing arm. And then the left side, we're gonna put this upper pivot support in place. I'm gonna run these two bolts down, uh, not completely tight. We wanna retain a little bit of movement in there because we also have a spacer that allows you to slide the belt in uh, to get around the, the pulley of the back wheel. So that goes like that. I'm gonna take this back out. We'll get that left side in position. Uh, slide the main pivot through. Get the belt in there. Hold that in place. Put the spacer back in. It fits into a pocket. It's got the spacer on there for the Olins. I'm gonna tap through the upper shock pivot bolt and the main swing arm pivot bolt. Uh, it's helpful to put a little wedge under the transmission to support the drive line so these, uh, these pivots slide in easily. Once in place, I'm going to torque those inner bolts on the left side. I'm going to cut the retainer and reroute this main harness that is behind the uh, battery box. There's a little plastic tab on there and you're just going to basically lift it up and over and put it onto the inside of that tab. That'll allow for the, uh, the full movement of the rear suspension and prevent those wires from getting pinched. Once that is in place, we're gonna put these bolts in left and right. This is the structure that goes between the right and left swing arm. Again, at this point, our main pivot is not tight, so that thing can flex a little bit. Once we torque these down, then we'll go ahead and uh, torque down main swing arm pivot and the, uh, the shock point pivot. And those down with the gun, and then of course go behind and torque them to a specific spec. 5 16 bolt, 24 foot pounds. All torqued in place. Now your swing arm is rigid and solid. Uh, your shock bolt pivot, I'm gonna run this down by hand. That's a 12 point half inch bolt. And I run it down so that the head of the nut is flush with the actual bolt. Go to the other side, run that down. And then I'm gonna go ahead and torque that. And the torque spec on a half inch bolt is 40 foot pounds. Your main pivot. 90 foot pounds and don't forget to tighten up that pinch bolt on the bottom side of the right frame that'll uh, help you be able to torque that main pivot 90 foot pounds we're going to install our axle adjuster and axle carrier plate uh, comes with a tab for safety wire we're going to run this in until the holes in the slot and the plate are in the most further forward position. We're gonna take this vibration plate off of the stock brake hanger and also the specialty rear brake receiver bolt with the, uh, the dust boot. So you pull the dust boot off of the bolt, pull the bolt out of the OEM brake hanger, take that boot out of the uh, brake hanger, put the vibration clip into the new brake support bracket, install that boot. There's a slot inside there where the O-ring will fit into, or the, I'm sorry, the dust boot will fit into. There's your specialty bolt, and we're going to pull that boot up over the lip on that bolt. It'll keep all any kind of debris from getting into that uh, moving part. Okay, I just set the axle in here through the uh, axle adjuster plates with the axle spacers that are the OEM spacer with our brake hanger bracket, feed sensor, and the outer uh, bracket spacer. So everything is there except for the wheel, and that is the orientation in which it needs to be assembled. Slide the wheel in place. We'll lower the bike down so the axle is ready to slide through. Put the spacer in, put the belt in place onto the pulley. Get our brake hanger in place on the slider. We'll put the outer spacer in. Get our brake hanger in, the wiring facing down. Our kit comes with a plastic dowel to push through on the right side and holds everything in alignment. So you can just slide the axle through and uh, get your nut washers and nuts on there. Again, I'm gonna turn the nut down by hand until the nut is flush with the outside of the axle. Put the other side on, snug it in place, a little bit of torque, minimal. Just want to get the axle sucked in. We're going to go ahead and adjust our belt. There are etch marks or indicator marks on the adjuster plate and on a swing arm. So you make sure you get them in exactly the same place on both sides, right and left. Uh, then there's a jam nut that jams down against the safety wire tab. So after adjusting the axle, lock both sides down. So we're going to torque that axle to 90 foot pounds, spin the wheel. When, you're, uh, when your wheel is properly aligned, you'll see that there's an air gap on both sides of the belt in between the pulley flanges. At this point, we'll go ahead and install our rear caliper with the OEM fasteners. 
torque that down 24 foot pounds uh, we're going to install the brake line that is supplied with the kit new banjo washers and uh, we'll tie that brake line up to the bottom of the swing arm with the the p clamp provided you just suck fresh brake fluid through the system leave it through by hand and make sure you got a good rear brake we're going to put the safety wire on the rear axle nuts. So you want to uh, get your safety wire, your pliers, you're gonna thread the safety wire through the nut. You want to pull on the nut in the direction that it would be tightening. Uh, do a quick measurement and clamp the pliers where the receiving end of the tab is gonna be so that when you twist it up, you have the proper length. Go ahead and fish that wire through the tab. Uh, repeat the process with the pliers of twisting the wire. You're gonna trim it off. You want to turn it inwards so it's not going to catch your pant leg or a cleaning cloth or whatever you just try not to get that tab out in the open and that's it do the same thing on the other side here we are we have the right and left side saddlebag supports on the right side i'm i'm sorry on the left side i the kit comes supplied with a i think it's a half inch spacer tighten that down so it just moves a little bit I'm gonna put the bag on, which will align that bracket in its proper location, get everything in place, and then we'll go ahead and uh, torque that bracket down in place where it belongs. 5 16 24 foot-pounds. On the right side is our turbo kit, which has its own bracket support system uh, that does incorporate the uh, saddlebag support. There's two little tabs that I removed from the saddlebag support because I moved that to the outside of the bracket. Now this does uh, space your bags out about a three-eighths of an inch on each side, which is not even at all visible you know, from the rear view of the bike. But it does keep the, the support arms off away from the swing arm. Torque that in place. Put our bag on. Slide it into, there's three points, you slide it into the lower receiver and the upper two receivers at the same time. Turn that knob lock into place, lock the bag down. There's the swing arm assembly, 100% there. I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall my turbo dump pipe and his uh, engine guard accessories that he had. This part is available through trasperformance.com and our only distributor, which is Drag Specialist.